My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. All right. The lead is now to talk to Sai Lang at this point. I mean, I don't really... I don't like that I'm talking to Sai Lang based on the recommendation of a racist, but uh, but it does look like it will appear to continue the quest line, and I don't have to say anything you know, garbage in this conversation. Everything's still cool here, officer. So Sai Lang, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? He, for a moment, he's unsure how to respond. I don't go for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah! He kisses his fingers. Tasty, tasty drugs. I'm super into drugs. That's very cool. A lot of the coolest detectives do drugs. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale or at my home. Or on my person, he smiles. Sire, it appears not to be true. No drugs in sight. Sorry, it appears to be true. No drugs in sight, not in the box of sunglasses or under the speakers. Proceed. We're looking for a lorry driver who is transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. I mean, you could just say they. It's a lot shorter. That's even cooler. You investigating that and all, but uh, he points out the goods. I'm not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. A blatant lie, sire. Yet he tells it with conviction. We'd better believe him if we didn't know better. Or we'd believe him if we didn't know better. But you are a lorryman. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's that fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So, you admit you're a lorry driver? No. I just said I work harder than he and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think, realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Okay, maybe I'm also a lorry driver. A little? But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. He spreads his arms. So you forgot to tell me? Exactly. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved in that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know? The drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. He doesn't want to talk about them. He's afraid. Who are you afraid of, Sileng? Look. He looks around and lowers his voice. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. Here we go. A tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. If you don't want to get into this mess, you have to give me a reason to move on. I bought all your stock. We're buddies, Silang. Help us out. No one will know it was you. It's a she, okay? He whispers. The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way she talk, the way they talk about her. He shakes his head. She's no lady. There you go. A witness with corroborating evidence. It's Ruby. Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is the lady driver of yours? The racist? The other one with the tattoos? He points north. All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't want to hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Is the lady driver the old woman back here? Point to the pale driver, dazed out, strange. Uh-uh. Uh, could her name be Ruby by any chance? I told you. I don't know. I don't know a name. Okay. We're cool now. All right. He snaps back to his usual self. Ice cold. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You can walk away from here with some funky sunglasses, detectives. Both of you. You deserve it. Where are you from, sir? Oh, okay, that actually re-rolled this and gave me some experience. Great, I wasn't even trying to go for that. Uh, but it's just an encyclopedia that we've already read uh, before. Oh, did I not succeed that last time? Actually, hang on. You're from the Apricot Suzerainty, right? Lieutenant winces at the words slightly. I mean, 
Apricot Sushrainty calls to mind an era when the Seagay Archipelago was colonized by Revishol. It's a bit of a slur. In other words, uh, yeah, it's definitely Banana Republic. Uh... Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I, I meant to say you're from, pronounce it very painstakingly. Sea guy. Very cool. Selling nods with your, uh, with his eyebrows furrowed. I admire your awareness of our intertwisted histories. It's super nice of you to apologize for colonialism. But the apricot suzerainty is a shithole. That's why I left. <laughs> um, you're welcome. I do try to be supportive of other people and cultures. That's so cool, officer. Speaking of... Why not support an independent local entrepreneur by buying some pants and glasses? I'll leave it to you for now. Okay. Got a lead. So that's the lead that gets us Ruby. But hang on. Just one second. Is that all I'm actually going to be able to hunt down there for the... the Find out who's the lady driver and where's her lorry. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it might be Ruby. I'm going over here to actually see if I can tell uh, tell Grace what I'm up to. Because we might be able to use this to get Grace's resources to try and help us find Ruby. Or she might just say, oh, I saw her. She's right up there. Something like that. You're back. Good. What can I, I help you with? I spoke with the lorry man at the roundabout. Word has traveled, yes. But nothing of real substance has surfaced yet, I gather. She smiles and explains, Wild Pies has eyes on the intersection, but not ears. One of the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout. we have given them a read on the entire corner. It appears we're being monitored every step we take, colleague. Lieutenant shrugs. Did we have any other business here? Interesting. So it didn't even give me the opportunity to say what we learned there. Which to me says maybe the game thinks we should keep that under our hats. It's not late enough for Kim to leave, I don't think so. I'm just going to go in here and see if I've reopened the reroll on changing my expression. And if I have, I might try and change it. I have recited the poem, Tommy. And that's a, that's a whole extra four there. Okay. Uh, we are looking for Electro Chemistry. That's some electrochemistry. I already have pants of electrochemistry on. I think that actually might be all of my electrochemistry. Oh, nope. That's a bit of extra. Oh, we've even got glasses for it. Perfect. Oh, a plus four, baby. Very glad I've gone and checked here. All right, let's roll that plus four. 50-50, come on. Yes! It's like something snaps inside of you. A nerve ending, a thought, a sadness. Your face in the mirror is suddenly clean of the leer that had distorted it for God knows how long. Just like that, it's over. A running gag that your life has become. A sad old man looks back at you. I... So I managed to change the expression and all I got... Is a frown out of it. I don't want to go back to the expression. Hey, uh, Kim. What do you think of a new face? Yes. Uh, hmm. All right, never mind. Looks like nothing really changes for me, having done that. I thought because that was like the first big role we saw and because it was so unreachably far from us that it might be big. It might have opened other things though. Maybe like having finally changed our expression has reopened the Feld mural. That seems quite likely to me. One thing is now we have an extra point in here, so I could already forget Wompty Dumpty Dumps. No, that's actually really good for experience. Uh, I, yeah, I can forget Arno Van Eyck. Okay. So, Guillaume Lemillon. I want that. 
Searchlight Division. I want that one too, but I don't know if that's actually necessary. Call du Mama de Car. No, don't care. Bankruptcy sequence. Don't really care about that one either. One more door I care about a little. Okay, so one more door is a very short period of time. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to internalize that. Over the next 45 minutes, it'll roll. I imagine its effect will be something like reopens all door-related skill checks or something similar. I'd really appreciate if it were, frankly. All right. So if that is as far as we can get currently in her quest line, let's try and spend the rest of the day running down Evrat. I don't really know what clothing I want to be wearing when I go into that door. But considering there's a drug operation going on, maybe it's electrochemistry. Oh, hang on. I got great electrochemistry around here, and it's, it's enough to say the book appears to be erotica, but without actual erotica. Yeah, I think the stats that you have, like different stats give different bubbles around you. Because that was a red bubble, and electrochemistry is, is physical, which is red in this game. And it only triggered when I walked past that with a bunch of electrochemistry. Seems kind of conclusive to me, to be entirely honest. The door has braved the elements of the decades. The copper nails holding out the uh, holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and so is the knocker, shaped like a lion's head. Press your ear on the door. Someone is moving around inside the apartment. You hear the water being turned off and the sound of dishes clinking together. The tenant must be cleaning up. That means you're too late. Nothing more to do here. Better report back to Everard. Knock on the door. No answer. I know you're in there. That already defeats the purpose, doesn't it? The lieutenant glances out of the surrounding windows. Let's get out of here. I want to warn the person on the inside. I'm opening the door. But the key stops midway in the lock. Something's blocking his path. Not a sound is coming out of the apartment. Lieutenant first looks at the door, then back at you, then signals you to back off from the door. As you turn to leave, you hear footsteps on the other side. Yes, someone's definitely home. We should leave. The lieutenant whispers. And go talk with Everard. Tell him what happens. That's why they couldn't open the door. Maybe there's a workaround. Hmm. It feels weird for me to have struggled for... Uh, when did we meet Everard? I want to say about 11? Episode 11? And it's somewhere around episode 45 now, so... Let's say that's a difference of 35 episodes. 35 episodes at 40 minutes of pop. That's 10 and a 10.2 hours, effectively. Uh, so it seems weird to have been belaboring, oh, belaboring, laboring over that choice for such a long period of time. Finally relent, and then immediately the game's like, actually, no, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> gotcha. Manana, do you have anything to say about it? Hola, wondering man. No. If nothing else, at least I get to talk to Everard again. My favorite character. I definitely tuned up the nasality in his voice, but like, I think the character was right. One thing I've really appreciated about doing this series is, um, like obviously a lot more of my series recently have incorporated voices in some fashion. Uh, obviously, like, Anytime I read out any character nowadays, it's in another voice. One thing I really appreciated about doing this series is, is the chance to practice that. And also, because I'm, like, trying to do it based off of the character that I see ahead of me, and if they haven't got a voice provided, I'm trying to do it based off the characterization provided in the text about them. I feel like it also has given me, like, a little bit more practice in trying to create a voice to match a character regardless of like any actual vocal or oral input obviously that's not relevant with evra but the relevance it holds is that evra my tuned up version of evra is is an extrapolation of of his personality or represented personality at least mr dubois 
Every worker, member of the board. How can I help you today? Everot, about the weasel. You fucked us. You waited too long. The weasel came back and now you can't open the door I asked you to open. The big man looks you straight in the eye. Everot forgives Harry. A wide smile crosses his face. Don't cry, my boy. It's going to be all right. I'm still going to tell you about the murder. That's just the way I am. Benevolence. I thought I had more time. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me to figure out who killed... Sorry. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed and who's why. Who killed who and why. There we go. He prints to roll up his sleeves. Real police work is going to start happening, I can promise you, Harry. It's going to be good. I heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild Pine said to scare us. Another violent measure. The top hats against us flat caps. I'm listening. Harry, this strike is a combination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut us down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? He nods gravely. A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united by the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from the machine gun. I'm talking beasts, Harry. Hardened killers from proxy wars in Yesmet, uh, Yesut, Seminon, Sarmazira. Uh, you know it. They've done it. They've been killing, burning villages, killing little children for the senior art of Pineapple Company. Harry. Everything they did there, they wanted to bring over here. They wanted to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Hold on, you have a village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village. But the mercs and their brutality are very real. Go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go anywhere else, they just move my container. <laughs> Wait, they move the container? Yes, I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. <laughs> His face turns serious. The killers that hired them, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little ropey. He shakes his head. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out in trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce. Harry, he says, ignoring the lieutenant. What you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us enough and we push back. And when we do, he raises his finger. We push to kill. Wait, the whole neighborhood isn't on it? Potentially, Harry. Potentially. We've got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys all ready to spring into action from their home base. Who exactly did the pushing? There's a militant group inside the union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhoods, making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organized crime. They're like you guys. He nods to you and the lieutenant. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment will follow. Again, that sounds like organized crime. So these idealists killed our victims? Mm-hmm. One day, Titus Hardy, leader, leader of the peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, the socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill that beast that was burning the land. He probably worded it differently, but it was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. 
He chuckles. I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested, Harry. They're my night boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. <laughs> Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. Uncertainly, uh, sorry, uncertainty belies his boasting. In the end, though, he believes it. Or at least he wants to believe. So, he doesn't want to counter with a narrative that exonerates the Union, but why? I'm going to go for everything else before I tell him that I know about the bullet. You mentioned a lawyer girl? Oh, Liz is a bright one, he grins broadly. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy, but hell, Harry, she comes back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Wait, the girl by the whirling? Who was keeping an eye on you? Is talking about her? Don't give him the pleasure. Better not mention it. I already know. Oh, he smiles. It's another big grin. And she really liked gardening, I hear. In March. Strange. Anyway, let's move on. The interesting thing about that is what he's referring to there is a clue that we picked up on at the time that the greenhouse was frozen over and she was still there wearing the gardening gloves. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their MO. That's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over. The work's right to the strike was over. The workers' rights to wear protective footwear. Harry, these guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe these scabs were organized by a security contractor? You said it? Hell! The fist slam on the table again. One of those guys looks big enough to take down that Brazilian elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. That does sound unlikely. Yeah, the big guy leaving the scabs at the gate is colossal. He's not scared of them. If anything, he likes them being there. Strange. Tell me about Titus Hardy and the crew. Well, they're a simply fine young men. All seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Cool members. Oh, Theo used to run them. But then things really... Ooh, that's actually information. That I, I, like, I did kind of know that because he was like the one that ended up pulling them in line, but still. Oh, Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into high gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. He starts laughing. Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who is second in command? They're almost all of them great guys. Born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they have the best interests of Martinet and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. Just don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Everyone I met with these hardies, can you ask them to cooperate with me? Man, of course, it's the least I can do for you, my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. You can now go and tell Titus about this, see what he has to say. Also, Harry, here's five real. I don't need it. I only wanted you to help me with the real, uh, the Hardy Boys. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you, just holding it out there. He pockets the bill. But I am willing to share information. Was there anything else? There was a bullet in the hangman's head. So they shot him! He sounds pleasantly surprised. He was shot in the head before he was hanged. How old? The man says. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I took a look into that yard. It's impossible to tell if he's telling the truth, Sire. What I do know is... Uh, the case is in safe hands. 
If anyone can get to the bottom of the shot and hanged man, it's my little policeman. Good speed, policeman. Good talk. Let's conclude for now. Was it a good talk? He leans back, suddenly worried. I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust this case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with a strike. I don't know what happened, Harry, but I wanted to feel... I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martinet, but of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. Great sadness overcomes him. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yet? Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I've been very, very clear, <laughs> he says, slowly shaking his head. I want to. I just can't. A man of the left, so you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. I'm not a man of the left. I'm a patriot of Revachol. Not that. You're right not to trust me. I can take care of me. I'm a hustler. I grind. I'm a money engineer. No. What's that supposed to mean? I'm more left than you are. Uh-huh. And this is another corrupt scream. Uh-uh. What's that supposed to mean? I'm more left than you are. You're saying it, but I don't believe you. You know how it is. Company snitches, argent provocateurs everywhere. I'm barricaded in this fortress of mine. And I need to get a message out. Will you help me? And what's with this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of either of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper. He pulls out an envelope. And then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. What are the signatures for? I'm glad you've asked, Harry. The union is going to build a modern youth centre here in Martinet. He grins broadly. It'll be righteous. We get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. I actually love the idea. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need you to get... Two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. You mean the fishing village? Yes, yes, the little cul-de-sac on the coast where all the little men have drowned in the sea or the bottle. A gloomy place doesn't have that union attitude. What'll happen to the current occupants? They're not gonna have to deal with construction noise for six months. Oh, sorry. They're just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months and then they'll be living like kings right next to a fancy new youth centre designed by the best architects in all of Stella Marie. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? Are you 100% certain no one's going to end up homeless? Am I? The big man shakes his head in disbelief. Harry, these people... Martinet is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. We're going to build a youth centre there. The value of the properties goes up and the kids have a place to play in. I'm not looking. I'm looking out for those people. Not pulling the rug out from under them, Harry. I'm just looking out for all of Martinet. Not just the harbour. He means it. Ooh, he means it. I think youth and community centers are like a really, really, really good thing. I think overfunded, overfunded, I, I, I don't necessarily have any way to say overfunded. I guess extremely extremely quick development in areas often displaces the people that already live there or as he was talking about uh the value of their properties goes up and the kids have a place to play in or you get priced out of the market effectively as the houses go up and as your income hasn't necessarily increased uh without you know, rent control or something similar you can get priced out of the market um and in doing so get displaced 
So my concern is for that. Everyone there except for two people has signed on. I have the option to talk to those people as I attempt to get them to sign. And I believe in the, the community center. I don't... I don't know if I can trust... Everett personally, but I think I can trust his conviction. So, hang on. No, no, no. I can't trust... I can't trust him, but I can trust his ambition, I think is probably the better way to say it. I... He's corrupt as hell, which is why I can't trust him, obviously, but... Everyone that is a stakeholder in his industry is benefiting from his corruption. But also, he's, you know, as, as Manana was saying, corrupt in a corrupt world is effectively fighting back. Like, I'm definitely not sponsoring anything, and I don't, I, I wouldn't be, like, I, I'm not saying that, oh, Everard's uh, ideology is correct or anything like that. I'm also saying, I'm also not saying it's not, to clarify. The context of the world like any new piece of information could be revealed to me and then you know the the context changes the situation so no, i'm not claiming either of those but i think i think i feel comfortable doing this kim what do you think of this it depends i don't think what we got from mr Kerr was very useful he studies everyone but he thinks it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. He bows his head in shame, then looks up at you and smiles. But once we really get talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martinet. And maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can. Deliberately omitting things. Fine, if I happen to be there, I'll ask them. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. It's such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. Yeah. He hands you an open white envelope. You need to get the signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right across the pawn shop and across the canal. I heard there was some trouble with the water lock, but it should be fixed now. Once you've got the signatures, mail this to 1302 to La Roca and La Delta. Then I'll know you're a solid socialist. Again. Further. <laughs> Can we go over a few details consulting the murder again? No, let's change the subject. Okay, let's leave that. I think now it's my time to tell everyone <laughs> everything I know about Evron. And interestingly, in doing that, going to tell Grace Messier uh, about Everard, I can, uh, I, I, I'm well situated to then immediately talk to Lillian afterwards if I want to. Okay. Again, every single time I think that the, the container is gone magically because I think it's supposed to be there. I have a difficult time passing some of these environments. As I mentioned, I, I think twice an episode now. All right. Down this way. Let's actually have a look at the, the letter. A white envelope with a stamp attached to the upper right corner, handed to you by Everett Clare. Inside are some legal documents with two names printed on them. Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Both signatures are required. Oh, <gasps> loophole in the deal. Baby, I got some logic glasses. Let's get those on. Ooh. There's my logic glasses. Okay, hang on. Wait, what are all my logic increases? All oh, right, the Pipo is the, the one that gives me two. Okay. I think that might be all of it for me. It's the only stuff that comes to mind. Let's read everything about the letter first, right? Look at the zoning plan. The youth center cuts into the ocean like a bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. 
going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings, almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into the youth center. Don't like that. This is either ominous or a cool architectural choice. It's hard to say. My money's on cool. Looks like a cubic pyrite. Kim, what do you think of this? I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fun. The lieutenant replies, flipping through the documents. I like the princess. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but he shrugs. How else are you going to build something? It's always inconvenient to build things, and citizens inevitably have disagreements over construction projects, but there's no other way. Try to find a loophole in the deal. Yeah, big. There's no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street accents, uh, access for the next 12 to 40 months. Their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise outside their doors. Wait, what are the ramifications of this? One of the uh, once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. Look, Kim, point to the photocopy. These people are going to have to move away. Can we do something about it? Uh, I should have seen it. The lieutenant frowns as he reads over the document again. <sighs> Everard probably has eyes on us, but he pauses to think. You could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed, or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll be already gone. Everard's people would be watching you here. Yeah, it's a low interfacing. I can just put it away and leave, I guess. Hell yeah. Everard's people... Hmm. I guess I'll do it at nighttime in my own house in the privacy of my own company. Where I was originally going to do the expression change, but you know, we just passed an area where we'd managed to do that. Um, one thing we can do now. Actually, Manana, do you have anything new to say now that I've got this information? All I'm wondering. New. Okay. Another person that I want to see if they have anything new to say is like, we've got more confirmation on you. Do you want to say anything about it? Right to work. And again, no. It's, it's amazing, by the way, that he's chanting right to work as well, considering right to work legislation in the United States is commonly used for oppressing workers. It's remarkable. Absolutely remarkable that you can name it something like that. It's like if I passed a bill that was like the, the, the free candy for everyone bill, and then you read the bill and it says, I get to kill all of your firstborn personally with my own hands. And it says nothing about candy. Wild. All right. Let's go tell Titus that uh, Everard said he can talk to us now. The Copernado is back. What do you want? Hey, about that complex operation out of Ruby's Lorry. I think it's time to another case I'm, I imagine, involved in. Nope. That's all he says. He doesn't even say anything. Next question. I'm going to take off now. That's all the questions I had for you, actually, buddy. Okay, so we've got probably not that long left on the development of our thought. Uh, Wasteland of reality is taking ages. Uh, one more door. Yeah, one more door only has seven minutes remaining. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to advance time reading a book here for a bit. Time advances quickly when you're reading a book, apparently. Or at least I thought it did. Hey, there we go. Right. Thought complete. One more door. All psych white checks unlocked. Yep. There is no way to open the supply depot door. Accept it. You can't open all the doors. You have to integrate this into your character. Some doors will forever remain closed. Even if every single other door will open it to one time or another, maybe to a key or maybe to some sort of tool meant for opening doors. But this one will never accede to such commands. A realization crucial to personal growth. Crucial. And in reopening all of those psych checks, did you actually just now allow me to re -look at, uh, redo the door? Oh, I've got another suggestion for the yen. But that actually looks like the only thing that we just got extra there. 
For the moment, though, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Disco Elysium. There's a uh, playlist in the description down below with all of my contents on the game past, present, and future. And hopefully we'll see you next time.